Okay, and today's uh, dairy conference associated with the uh, Virginia Dairy Show and sex semen field trial that was carried out on, on, on dairy farms this spring. And it was a very significant and major field trial, the largest of its kind anywhere in the world ever. Um, it was undertaken in conjunction with sexing technologies, uh, the stakeholders including Munster Cattle Breeding Progressive Genetics in Dove, the Agricultural Trust and uh, four meat processors, Peapad, Dawn Meats, Slaney and ABP. So those organisations came together to put together this uh, field research trial with the objective of evaluating the cost effectiveness of sex semen as a technology for Irish dairy and beef farmers. The potential of the technology is very significant in that it has the obvious desired outcome of being able to generate heifer calves as required and beef and bull calves as required. However, the technology has a limitation, or at least historically has had a limitation in that it results in reduced pregnancy rates. And uh, as a consequence of that, the technology never really took off in Ireland, um, because here we have a, a requirement to have tight seasonal canning systems, particularly in the dairy here. So dairy farmers cannot tolerate a reduction in pregnancy rate, particularly in the early part of the breeding season. Uh, work from other countries had indicated that the pregnancy rate would typically drop from, say, 50% pregnant to first service to 35% using sex semen. So in terms of the trial itself there were 400 farmers involved in the trial. Dairy farmers took a, about 14,000 units of semen across nine different bulls. Each ejected it was uh, split four ways into a control which was not sexed and then free sex treatments and that was used across both heifers and cows. Um, the, uh, all of the inseminations were carried out by technicians, AI technicians working for the uh, AI companies that were involved in the project and uh, they happened this spring. Uh, since then, since uh, then we have been collecting, we have been collecting data associated uh, from the project, so all of the insemination records, pregnancy diagnosis records etc. We have um, compiled or written the process of compiling that data now, and today was an opportunity to talk about the first early results as a consequence of that. Um, and the initial results are certainly very positive in the sense that they are indicating that um, certainly in terms of getting the desired outcomes in terms of um, efforts versus bulls, uh, we're hitting the 90% effort calves as was. Um, target but more importantly the um, in terms of uh, the pregnancy rates where um, we went into the project hoping to see you know would the 50% pregnant to first service how would that be maintained we knew internationally that the figure was about a 35% 35% pregnant to first service in fact in the trial what we're seeing with both fresh semen sex semen and frozen sex semen it's about a 5% reduction uh, from 50% down to 45%. The, um, whilst we anticipated the only a 5% reduction for the fresh sex semen, I guess what we hadn't anticipated was the reduction for the frozen sex semen at also only about 5%. And um, that alone is clearly very significant because it potentially opens up the technology to all dairy and beef farmers that you don't necessarily just have to use it as a fresh sex semen product, you can actually use it as a frozen sex semen product. Um, so it's, a very, very, it's been a very exciting project, uh, obviously huge potential, and a lot of work by the stakeholders that have been involved in the project, Sexing Technologies, Chavis and ICBF have been the three main conduits of the project, and then the stakeholders that have been involved, as I did at the start, and uh, the, the, the various farmers that contributed. Um, in terms of where next, um, we are certainly now, uh, the initial results, we are collecting more data with a view to farming up on those results and uh, we will be presenting that, that data at various conferences and meetings over the next number of weeks and months with a view to ultimately, with the goal of ultimately making the technology or helping to ensure that the technology is available for, for, for farmers, dairy and beef farmers 
um, the goal of uh, um, it's next spring 2014. However, I should say that uh, you know that will not come without very significant um, investments from the industry um, because the technology is a, a, a very exciting technology, but it's it's um, it's it's at least up front, it's quite a, an expensive technology to get access to. Um, but we do believe that as a consequence of the results from the project and uh, the follow-up cost-benefits work that we're now doing, that we will be able to make a, a strong case for the industry to invest in this very exciting technology for, for farmers in the wider industry.